You're listening to the Noon 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Cole, and I'll take you behind the scenes of Noon 15, an independent band writing, performing, and recording original music. This season, we'll talk about Noon 15's debut release, Volume 1, and get the story behind one song per episode, as well as the ups and downs of working around day jobs, babies, and band shakeups here in Ithaca, New York. At the end of each episode, you'll hear the song in its finished form. Thanks for listening, and welcome to Noon 15, the podcast. And welcome to episode two of Noon 15, volume one. I'm here with Mandy Goldman, Samuel B. Lupowitz, Harry Nichols, and Joe Massa. Let You Roll is track number two, and this one goes to Goldman Lupowitz for the songwriting credit. seems a little interesting because it sounds a little like a song about a breakup and it was written by a couple so yeah where's uh what's going on in this one it's this is actually this is actually not about a breakup well it's not about a a love relationship breakup i see as i have like a theme in songs that i write about when people are like so good that it is really frustrating to me i'm like stop i'm like just fuck up like please just make a mistake can we swear on this i'm swearing i mean we can i'm like can you please just like there are no rules can you just not be perfect or like you know be so important and like it bothers me so i've like i've written multiple songs about this and this song is like it's not that they're snobby about it just that no it's just that that okay yeah it's just that people who are too good fucking frustrate the shit out of me like (laughs) i just don't like it so i i like This is a song that I wrote about, like, just, it's not about any one person in particular, like, the person I'm thinking about or the people I'm thinking about change all the time when I'm singing it and thinking about it, but it's just, like, like, I, at a certain point, I have to let go and just, like, let you, just, you do what you got, you be so good, you be so important, you be so perfect, and I'll just... I'm going to take my hands off of the situation and not be, I'm I'm not going to get too caught up in this anymore. Just accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, I'm not good at, which is why I have to write so many songs about it. (laughs) (laughs) I've been trying to break free, but all this time turning me, yeah. To be a little more generous to you, I, I always hear this song as being about someone who wants you to know how important they are. And that's what you're that's how I always hear it. Yeah. No. Well, that's because that's how it feels like whether or not the person's trying to. It's always like, <laughs> I know, I know you're so great. <laughs> that's almost how you take it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's yeah. Like that. Yeah. So um, petty. You've certainly been the front person before, Mandy. You know, I mean, you were you were one of the main singers, of course, in the ego band and all of that. Am I right that this is the first project that you've really kind of led? You know, yeah. You've been the one up there. Yeah, this is my this is my big lead singer project, I guess. Yeah. Could you ask for two more qualified backup singers? No. <laughs> no. Michael McDonald. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's what a fool believes. <laughs> there you go. Nice. I'm gonna leave you high and dry. Because I think I started singing in this town, like in cover bands where I was splitting lead vocals or in the ego band where I was splitting lead vocals I'm like not attached to being the person who sings every song so definitely in the future we're gonna have some more more split vocals I think yeah uh everybody hates it so much when Harry sings so I think yeah (laughs) we should just subject them to that some more sweet sweet calypso Well, 
that, that's that's part of the interesting point, though. You know, like a band where Harry Nichols is not the primary singer. As Sam, you put it once. I think your words were in a band where I'm the third best singer is saying quite a lot. You know, I'm that's, very uh, comfortable being the th- yeah the least <laughs> the worst singer in the, of the singers. Your linguistic superiority and your big brown eyes. Just that it came together like that with the uh, with the three vocalists here is really something. And I don't care if you're a star. I don't care if you're a star. This song and every song that I've written for this record, and probably if some of my songs make it on to the next one too, um, has a co-writer um, mostly. I. I don't I don't want to say mostly out of necessity because I love writing with Sam and Joe, but also like I couldn't voice any songs that I wrote. I would write melodies and lyrics and then I would bring Sam or Joe the recording of it. And I would say, like, can you help me? Like, you know what this song is supposed to sound like, right? And for the most part, they did. So they would kind of make it into a song for me. Because this isn't, am I right, this isn't really your first time writing songs. It's something that you've done to some extent before. Yeah, I I started writing songs like, I feel like 2014 or 15, something okay. like that. Yeah. And I still have a couple of songs that Noon, one at least one song that Noon 15 doesn't play and a few songs that I've just never played for anyone. But um, yeah. Do you find yourself taking any kind of different approach to a song that you wrote versus one that, uh, one of Sam's or one of Harry's? Um, yeah, actually, I definitely like, <laughs> there's... Funnily enough, I don't think I think as hard about the songs that I write as the ones that that they write. I'm always like, especially like Harry writes these songs with like a character in them very often. So I'm always trying to like, I feel like my job is to be like the vessel of whatever that is and figure out what the character's intentions are and then convey that in the performance. Um, And because I'm because I'm like first person there for my thought process when I'm writing I don't put as much sort of acting work into it as I do and I would think it's more natural too because you it's already in your head you know what you have in mind for it yeah yeah it's like sometimes it can be a little more disconnected and it's no sweat off my back no Next question I had was for Sam, so we'll just oh, wait a second. Okay. Awkward. Okay. <laughs> Holding up the whole introduction here. Oh my god. Good timing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Joe did his guitar parts as an overdub on this song rather than live uh, with the band in the studio. So he took the opportunity to, in addition to the microphone, right up in front of his guitar amp like we would normally do. also put one outside with the studio door cracked in the tile hallway and we got this really cool natural ambient reverb sound it's a sound you hear a lot on old uh, Led Zeppelin and uh, the faces were a big influence big crunchy guitar sound and then you hear the reverb kind of happening in the other ear a little bit. Um, so that was what I was trying to go for with Joe's guitar on that. I was I thought it was pretty cool, actually. If I were going to show somebody a song to sort of base what this band sounds like or is going for, I think I would say Let You Roll. Um, 
And I think that's kind of the first real song that we all sort of played together and got together. All right. Well, I think we are ready to hear Let You Roll. This is Noon 15. <laughs> I'm not going to play any of the tracks. I'm just going to have you doing that. <laughs> Twist it all around, yeah. 
Thanks for listening to the Noon 15 podcast. Visit Noon15.com to subscribe and for more music, videos, and info on upcoming shows. If you like what you hear, tell your friends and leave us a review on iTunes. Tune in next time for another trip behind the scenes with Noon 15.